but we can do more. The more efficient our auto fleets are, the more efficient our truck fleets are, the less people are using, that lowers gas prices as well. So that's the second thing we can do. The third thing we can do is we can start looking at electric cars and, and maybe natural gas cars so that we're not just using petroleum to power our vehicles. That would be, by the way, a huge boost for Gamesa. If, if you've got a, a much better distribution network for electric cars, you know, the, right now, some of these electrics, you know, you should be able to just plug it in into your garage. You basically just have a big socket. You plug it in at night, unplug it, you're driving it all day, you get home, you plug it back in, and if you've got one of these smart boxes in your garage, the unused electricity from your car actually goes back into your house. And so you're saving both ways. But the problem is right now that uh, we don't have a broad enough distribution network. The cost of advanced batteries for cars is still a little bit too expensive. So we're trying to drive down the price. It's like anything else, though. It's the same with your wind turbine, same with wind energy. The more you make, the cheaper it gets because the technology improves, you're creating more of them, you get economies of scale. So, number one, increase oil production. But that's not a short that's not a long term a short term solution. And it's not a long term solution either. It'll just it'll help a little bit. Number two, more efficient cars, so we're using uh, our gas uh, more effectively. Number three, shifting to electric cars uh, and other forms of transportation so we don't use oil as much. None of that's going to help you this week, though. So, you know, like I said, if you're getting eight miles a gallon, you may want to think about a trade-in. You can get a great deal. I, I promise you GM or Ford or, or Chrysler, they're going to be happy to give you a deal on, on something that gets you better gas mileage. All right. Young lady right here. President, I want to thank you for going to Latin America a couple weeks ago. And this is a great story where Exxon Bank, Exxon Bank and Gamesa worked together to supply over 50 um, turbines to Honduras, for example. Right. Uh, if you could elaborate more on your national export initiative, I think that, that would be an amazing uh, thing to talk about. Well, that's a good point. You guys are selling some of your turbines overseas, partly because uh, what's called the Export-Import Bank which is a government agency that helps businesses market to uh, overseas markets, uh, hooked up with uh, Gamesa and, and saw, discovered this way where they could get into that market. Now, one of the ways that we got in trouble before the recession was we were borrowing a lot of money to buy a lot of stuff from somebody else. Right? I mean, basically what happened was we ran up our credit cards, we took out home equity loans, and we bought a lot of flat screen TVs, and we bought a lot of, uh, uh, you know, whatever y'all buy. Uh, I didn't want to get personal in terms of all the things that you might have purchased. But a lot of it was made somewhere else. And that was great for China. That was great for some of these other countries that are imp exporting to the United States, but it wasn't very good for U.S. industry. The way countries succeed over the long term is by making stuff and selling it to somebody else. So, uh, so what my, I set a goal. I said, I want to double our exports. I want to double our exports over the next five years, and we can do it. We've already increased our exports by 18%. Now, that's a good start, but that means we got another 80% to go. And that's where using something like the Export-Import Bank can be really important because a lot of these other countries give a big advantage to their exporters. They help give them financing. They help them... You know, find markets, they negotiate deals for them. And my attitude is, well, if they're doing it for their companies, I want to make sure we're doing it for our companies. 
and I want to make sure that goods that we're producing here in the United States get sold uh, other places. We've got the best technology, we've got the best workers in the world, but we, we, are, we are such a big market that a lot of times we've been focused more internally than thinking about how can we sell to other countries. And we can't be afraid of competition. We've got to go after it. All right? Uh, young lady right there. Yeah. Hi, my name is Gazabel. Uh, yeah, my question is, uh, in light of what you just said, what of uh, corporate tax incentives and R&D tax incentives that will make companies like Amesa do their manufacturing here? Because it's one thing to have the knowledge base in the United States, but we really need manufacturing back here. You're right. And the reason the companies locate in different places is, is complicated. A lot of it has to do with the fact that labor costs may be lower in some of these other countries. But a lot of it has to do with our tax code, which is kind of screwed. On paper, we've got the highest tax, one of the highest tax codes for corporations in the world, on paper. But here's the catch. We have so many loopholes that it turns out you've got a whole bunch of companies who are paying no taxes, or barely paying taxes, or they keep their money in offshore accounts, and it doesn't get reinvested back here in the United States of America. So this is one of the reasons why I've said that I think it would make sense for us to reform our tax code, simplify it, lower the rate for corporations, but eliminate a bunch of the loopholes so that everybody's paying the same. And it's fair. Because what you pay in taxes should not depend on how good your lawyer is or how good your accountant is. If you make a certain amount of money, that's what you should pay. And I think that same principle, by the way, we can apply to individuals as well. So one of the things I'm interested in is looking at tax reform. 90% of you shouldn't even have to probably file a return. You should, you, the way electronics works these days, you should be able to, you know, with your W-2, it gets plugged in, it's on a computer somewhere, you know, here's your refund, you sign something electronically, it gets done. Most people don't itemize. If you don't itemize, you know, sending in some complicated return is just a waste of paperwork. And even if you do itemize, most of you probably, it's your, your mortgage on your house, you know, interest payments on your mortgage, and a couple other things. It's, it shouldn't be some two-week ordeal. And by the way, because uh, sometimes, you know, uh, folks will say, well, you know, you don't have to do your taxes. Look, it's true, I don't do my taxes anymore. I've got other stuff that I've got to do, but it wasn't that long ago when I did do my taxes. I remember. It was terrible. <laughs> Just like I remember pumping gas. I don't pump gas anymore, but I remember what it was like when you filled it up and it turned out you didn't have as much money as you thought. Um, so, so I think we can actually simplify it, but on manufacturing, tax reform on the corporate side could make a difference. The other thing, though, is in terms of encouraging manufacturing, we've got to understand what our advantage is. See, we'll never compete in terms of low wages. There's always going to be some place that has lower wages than we do. We're, we're a wealthy country. So if, if, if some, a company just wants to you know, make plastic toys, you know, we're, we're just not going to be able to keep up with that. But when it comes to high-end, high-skill jobs, those are the kind of manufacturing jobs we have to go after. And that's where research, innovation is so important. That's where on something like clean energy, making sure that there's a market for that clean energy is so important. That's what's going to produce manufacturing jobs. Making sure we've got a good smart grid. That, those are the kinds of things that are going to make sure that we have the high-end you know, manufacturing uh, here, in our, uh, here in our country. And I just want to introduce, uh, there's a guy right here, 